This is a video that shows how a multiplexer works. In your lab 4, you are asked to use the 2 to 1 marks and the 16 to 1 marks. But for illustration purposes, for this example, I'm going to show you using the 4 to 1 marks. This is the 74153 4 to 1 multiplexer or marks, and these are the pin assignments. Right, so these two, the S1 and S0, are your selector lines. The I here corresponds to your input. Your Y here is your output, and here are your ground and VCC. I will I will explain regarding these two pins later on. So, as you can see, what I do is that for illustration purposes, I am now connecting all my inputs to my input switches here. So the blue lines here, this is my I0, I1, I2, and I3. You can connect the input to anything, a logic circuit at the front, or maybe an, an electrical circuit, whichever that suits your needs. But for this purpose, I'm just connecting this directly to my input switches. Okay, and I forgot to mention that you also have your selector lines here all right so the selector line is used to actually actually choose which input do you want to transfer it to your output so in this case since this is a four to one marks meaning that my selector should be able to choose all four meaning that i need two to the power of two and which is why you see you have the s1 and s0 if this is an 8 to 1 max, you should have th 3 selector lines. And if you have a 16 to 1 max, you should have 4. Because 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So, these are my selector lines. And as you can see, now my selector line is in 0, 0. Okay? And the output here, there's only one output since this is a 4 to 1. So, my output here goes to this LED. Okay? And... Now, my selector is actually at 0, 0. And therefore, whatever input is on this side will be shown on the outside. So, now my I0 is controlled by my first switch here. So, as you can see, whenever I change this, it will be reflected on the output. This will not affect any of the changes when I use the other inputs here. This is my I2 and this is my I3 and I1. Only I0 is shown here because now the selector line will only take output from 0. So if I were to change this to 1, this is 0, 1. And now you can see that Whatever I change to my I0 just now will not be shown like previously when here when I'm choosing 0, 0 as my selector. And you can see when I choose 0, 1, your I0 will not affect the output. Only I1 will have an effect to your output here. So similarly, if I were to choose I2, now I'm using, now both are zero. Now I'm choosing now I2. So this is one zero. So now this one will cause an, a change to my output. Your switch one, your switch zero, zero will not change anything. And lastly, if I were to change this to I3, now only this input here will cause a change to my output. So. Max is actually used to actually when you have multiple inputs and at certain time you want to choose a selected input to be shown outside. So maybe at certain part of the stage you want maybe I0 to be selected. Some part of the output you wanted only I2. So this is where the max come in. Now, I did mention here about these two pins. This is something new that you will encounter starting from this lab. This is what we call your enable pins. 
Alright, the enable pins allows the chip to actually function as what it should be. So, before you understand the enabling function, first, you must understand how a specific component works. For example, if you don't know how a multiplexer works, then you wouldn't know how this enable will decide whether your marks work or not. Because first, you have to know how the marks work. Okay? So, for this, there's a bar on top of this pin, which means that this is enable low. Meaning that to make your chip works. Remember, the VCC and ground is actually to power up your chip. This is more like your switch. Okay? So, for example, if you were to use your if you were to plug in your charge, uh, for example, if you were to use your TV, all right? So this VCC and ground is your plug that you are going to plug it in, okay? And gives you power, all right? And this is actually your switch, or in this case, your remote control to turn your device on and off. So in this case, since this is enabled low, okay? Now, considering that you know now how a MUX work. Now here, again for illustration purposes, I am now connecting this to my other input switch and here it is set at zero. Okay, but ideally you should just connect it straight to your ground because for your lab 4, you don't have to actually uh, have to turn your chip on and off. But if I were to use this and changes to one meaning that now my chip will not work and therefore as you can see now my output is at i3 okay because now this is one one so supposedly my switch tree will work as you can see now my led will not turn on same if i go same thing go happens if i were to change this to zero zero but if this so this is sort of like my on and off switch. The VCC and ground is to give power to your chip. And as you can see, if I switch this back to zero, now my, multi my multiplexer works. And you see that now the LED lights up. So if I were to turn this on, it will not work at all. So basically, the enable pins will be shown in your data sheet. So that is another component that you have to add in to your report as to the enable pins. How does the enable pin make your chip works? So starting from your next lab onwards, you will encounter other chips that will have similar enable functions such as your flip-flop, your registers and others. And hopefully you can understand them better.